Touch the rain, I was heading nowhere Your whiskey cheek in the morning window frost Good afternoon everybody and welcome back to the show and as you can tell today we have a very special guest indeed we are joined by the Americana artist uh, Van Platen. Van how are you today? I'm great thanks for having me on the show. It's a pleasure to have you um, on the show thank you so much for joining us. Um, so obviously the, the first thing I really want to talk about uh, was your album that was released on November 19th uh, yes. called The Way Down. Um, yes. It's been out for a little while now. Um, mm -hmm. I just kind of thought if we could maybe talk about uh, how the album sort of first started and how it came to be. Absolutely, yes. Well, it was originally just going to be a few singles and the pandemic happened uh, right after I had written the first song. So my, my friend and co-producer for the record, Brian Elijah Smith, uh, I actually met him in person for the very first time when we wrote Bird on a Wire together, which is the first track on the record. That's my dog. <laughs> She's got her dog. Uh, so he was traveling, uh, touring on his tour down through Florida, and he had DM'd me on Instagram about my music, and I had actually just found his music because uh, he was on a radio show that I play on sometimes on public radio here and so he said well why don't we I have a couple days rest days you know why don't we get together and write a song and I said sure um do you mind coming to Lakeland and so sure enough he drove uh up from St. Pete to Lakeland and we met by one of the lakes here in downtown and wrote Bird on a Wire and I knew pretty quickly that uh, I wanted to work with him just because writing together was so easy and I really loved his previous record, his 2019 record, uh, In Through the Dark, is just a beautiful, beautiful album. Um, so I asked him if he'd produce a few songs and then once we got into it, it was like uh, very obvious that it needed to be a full record. Um, and so we spent a year uh, working on it together. That's brilliant. Um, so like like I said with with your style mm -hmm. your style is very uh, I, I guess it's more your vocals is probably why it's associated heavily with the Americana style um right but I was kind of looking a bit into your background uh of music and you are very very talented at a, a lot of different sort of instruments uh, and and uh, your style of music is very unique um mm -hmm. so what was it that first sort of your earliest memories of music my earliest memories of music are just these sensations of laying on the shag carpet and my childhood home, my first childhood home that I can remember, and my dad playing um, Beatles songs on his 12 string guitar and similar sensation of my mother um, playing piano and just being on, you know how the carpet feels very, um, there's like a lot of intense sensory memories, right? When you're when you're super young, and I'm talking like when I was a toddler. I that's mm -hmm. those are my first memories of music, and it's always been associated with like a positive thing, comfort, you know, um, togetherness, that kind of thing. Um, so those are my earliest memories for sure. Um, so with so with your your uh, music that you've sort of recently released uh, mm -hmm. was there any sort of uh, music that you'd maybe released uh, before or any earlier stuff that you'd done or any shows you'd done previously previous to the way down yeah previous to the way down uh yes well the way down's my second solo album so i put out my first solo album in uh almost actually two years to the day in november of 2019 and uh, that was my first kind of deep dive back into the music industry after leaving, you know, for a number of years. I was in an indie rock band in my 20s um, called Pemberley. That was my band. And I wrote songs for that band and, you know, was the front person for that band. 
And we released several EPs like back in the early and mid aughts. Um, and then, you know, as bands do, like, I mean, we were in that band for eight or nine years since sort of people kind of started moving away and getting married and having kids. Um, and so I quit touring then and, um, you know, had four kids, uh, still have them. <laughs> uh they're they're bigger now um my youngest is five my oldest is 11. uh and so i just started feeling the tug to write again and i was actually working in a ministry position um leading worship at a, a church locally and um, started feeling the tug to write again and then there was a whole it was it was very it was not easy it was not easy transitioning into writing original music again and then um writing the first record flying to los angeles like it, there so many things had to fall into place for that to happen um you know and then americana kind of found me after the fact uh after the record was made because i didn't even know i didn't know what i was going to do with it um i just knew i needed to make it kind of thing you know yeah. um and after that's a self-titled uh full-length album fan plating after that came out um all these americana press outlets kind of starting started to find me and that was when i kind of went oh well that makes sense given my upbringing and some of my background you know i grew up around bluegrass and southern gospel and rock and roll that's what I grew up around. And then indie music found me, you know, when I got a little bit older. Um, so yeah, it was, it, it kind of happened organically and, and it's hard saying something happened organically. I think sometimes can be misleading because I think sometimes people will assume I was just like floating through life and then it happened organically. No, I was like head down doing the work all the time, mm -hmm. you know, but I didn't know where it was going to go. And I think there's a, you know, there's a letting go of, of all of, of outcome, you know, that kind of had to happen for me to just focus on doing the work. And then everything that came after kind of paves the way for me to make a second record. Um, so it's been really exciting and unpredictable. And, you know, I had a, a ton of festivals and tour dates lined up in spring and summer of 2020. And then we all know what happened then. Um, and that's kind of why I ended up making the way down was because I was at home, I wasn't touring. Um, thankfully, I had some savings, you know, so we could kind of put money toward the recording, um, you know, and Brian was just really great with help helping me out, you know, with that. Um, but man, yeah, it's been a wild ride to get to here. So yes, that's a very long answer for yes, there's previous music out there. No, that's, that's great. Um... So would you say then, you know, obviously touch wood, we're, we're coming out the end of it now. Um, but would you say that if it wasn't for sort of life almost being put on hold, mm -hmm. that maybe the way down wouldn't have sort of come forward, not necessarily ever, but as early as it has? For sure, for sure. I wouldn't have had the focus time because I would have been gone, you know, and um that album a lot of those songs are the fruit of me locking myself in my bedroom you know i i was i was really determined to try my best um to have work time while we were all at home and we had a babysitter who she was like in our pod you know we were the only place she would come and then she would go home and come back here god bless her her name's grace uh and so I would have block time and I still do that. In fact, I've always done that ever since I started writing music again um, is instead of like expecting the muse to kind of just strike you as you're wandering through life uh, to schedule time to welcome the muse, you know? And so that's what I did during the, during the quarantine. Um, and yeah, the, those songs wouldn't be finished. I mean, the record probably wouldn't be out yet. I don't think. Uh, cause we wouldn't have finished it. Cause I would have been touring and Brian would have been touring and it would have taken longer. So yeah. And I'm you know, thankful. I have to say, yeah, exactly. I, I have to say that the way down, I, I love the album. Um, Thank you so much. 
uh, truly I, I i love how similar every song is very different um mm -hmm. you know but they they all kind of when i first ever listened to, obviously the first song i heard was the way down naturally um and i, I love the style of it and then i listened to bird on a wire which mm -hmm. blew me away i thought it's such a great song um and then i listened to new york which mm -hmm. for me is more like a an, like a bit more upbeat and that's something i didn't quite expect with the album um, right but I think it really complements each other really well. And I, and I love the album. So I'm kind of glad you had the time to release it when you did, because it's <laughs> one of my favourite albums. Um, on the whole album itself, is there any particular song of yours that's like a real favourite or a standout? Um, that tends to rotate for me, you know. But right now, I really, really love uh, Dirty Frame which is kind of a sleeper song on the record. I wish it had been a single, uh, but that one is a favorite for me, especially playing it live with the band. We do with this whole extended section where it's just, it's just so rock and roll. And uh, so I love that. And I love what that song means. That song is sort of the arc of childhood, adulthood and recovery, you know, like learning how to love the struggle kind of song. Um, and I love that it's a dance song that's yeah. got those kinds of lyrics. Um, cause I think that's kind of what, what life is all about. And then I really also love, um, I mean, I love them all. I love oxygen too. I love playing that one. That one played live. I finger pick it when I play it live instead of strumming it. Wow. And it's just a very, uh, I have never played that song live and not had a completely quiet room. It's just a very vulnerable song. And that song's about, um, it's a similar theme to Dirty Frame. Maybe that's why I love them both so much. Oxygen is about healing, about um, continuing to come back for more when life comes at you, um, but in a beautiful melodic way. And the imagery is inspired by being a child growing up in Florida and body surfing in the Atlantic and how you get like pummeled by the waves and then you, come back up and you really you know you're sucking in air and then you go right back out there and I think that that's like that's how I want to live my life so those two songs for sure right now although like all of them I love mm -hmm. all of them yeah. um so you obviously spoke about performing the songs live mm -hmm. uh, and if I'm not mistaken you've just kind of done a string of shows in Florida yes yes um, how were how were the shows and how was it all kind of received uh, so turnout is still just very, very thin, which I understand. Um, most of these performances were in outdoor venues and that kind of makes everybody a lot more comfortable. Um, but I think people are just hungry to be together, you know, even if they're hanging out outside and they're not like in a smoky bar and like that, that whole experience, which, you know, is very close to my heart because it's what I grew up doing, uh, <laughs> But just the outside, sitting out in nature, not in your house, and listening to music, it feels just very, very, very needed right now. And, and those shows went so well. I mean, you know, they weren't hundreds and hundreds of people, but that doesn't matter. Everyone that came was listening. That is a big difference than um, before the pandemic. I feel like you used to have to really fight for people's attention and now they just seem so ready you know I mean even in one of the shows uh, in Miami we were kind of setting up my, my friend Nathan and I um, who was on this leg of shows uh, Nathan Kalish we decided to do our last show in the round because we just enjoy doing it I guess it's not really round if there's just two of us but swapping songs instead of each playing a solid set and uh, one of the ladies in the crowd came up to me and she was like hey, we don't want to miss the music. Um, I just want to know how long you guys will be here because we need to go get food. And even that, you know, two years ago, they wouldn't have cared. So I just, I feel like the audiences, it's harder to get listenership on like digital places because there's so many releases every day, but the in-person stuff, it's like you make friends and fans for life at every show right now. And I think that's incredible. Yeah, exactly. Uh, for me, 
I mean, I, I haven't I haven't yet been to a show kind of since we've come out of out of this the space yeah. we're in in life. Um, but I just think there's this uh, sort of echoing what you've said. There's nothing more that I would love right now than just to go somewhere, just forget about everything that's going on, and just be invested in a, a performance and some some amazing yeah. music um, surrounded yeah. by positive people. That's that's something that I think is is really gonna have changed a lot. Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree. Um, do you have any shows or festivals or tours uh, at the moment lined up for this year? I am working on a lot of stuff. Um, I'm I'm not playing an official showcase at South by Southwest, but I'm going out there for the week. So I'll be there in Austin hanging out, um, maybe playing some unofficial showcases. I don't know. That's a, it's a fun adventure. It's one of those things where you kind of just like land with both feet in Austin and then just see where life takes you. Um, and then I'm planning, I'm gonna play some shows in Nashville in April. Um, the one that's confirmed is a Tuesday, April 12th, Tuesday um, at the five spot. And then probably like two or three others that week in Nashville. Um, oh my gosh, I forgot the biggest one because it's the soonest. I'm playing Gasparilla Music Festival in Tampa uh, at the end of this month with my whole band, uh, which I don't get to do very much. Usually I'm, you know, I'm on the road by myself, mm -hmm. uh, but these guys, they play my album release shows and anytime I have like a, a bigger thing, um, I'll invite them in. And Gasparilla is a festival that happens right on the riverfront in downtown Tampa. Um, it's just a beautiful, beautiful setting and it's an insane lineup. I mean, the Black Pumas are playing, the Aces are playing, Margot Price is playing, Mavis Staples is playing, The Revival is, it's just like, a, I'm like so hyped that I get to go as an artist because then I get to like lurk around backstage. Um, like I almost want to go as much for that as I do for actually playing. So that's February 26th in Tampa. And then March, I'll be in Austin the week of South by Southwest. And then April, the week of the 11th, I'll be in Nashville. And then after that, who knows? <laughs> So is that so that's that sounds an incredible lineup but I so wish I was sort of closer there that have been such a cool thing to go to um where are you looking I live in a place called Hertfordshire in North London oh okay yeah so nice quite a way away <laughs> yes I haven't been over that way in a long time my husband works for a company based in Cambridge mm -hmm. uh he's supposed to go over there in June but who knows what'll happen That's we'll it. see you never know <laughs> at the moment you can't really plan too far yes. ahead yes um so i'm still kind of mind blown that in the time you were sort of stuck at home and writing these songs as well as having four children um, yeah. like how on earth did you manage all of that i mean i don't know we all stayed alive so that was good uh i think Part of it is my husband and I both work from home and travel, well, formerly traveled, you know, uh, getting back to it. So we already, like the way our partnership works is very much like a give and take thing all the time. Like there's there's not really like a primary parent, we're both in it. Mm -hmm. um, so we just would like Sunday, Sunday evenings were our uh, meeting times. We would like conference each other on what the week looked like. And then we would just block our time, you know? Um, and then having one, just one person who would come in and help, you know, it was hard, but I mean, everything's hard. So like, mm -hmm. I, I don't know what else I would have done. Like, I don't really watch TV. So it just yeah. made sense to me. <clears throat> and I, you know, remember like I had just made this like big comeback into an industry that's notoriously really hard on women who are not 18 years old. And I was not going to like give up and let that slip through my fingers. I was just gonna do it. And so I just did it, you know, locked in my room with blankets under the door. <laughs> and then I come out and because I had the scheduled time that was like, these are my hours. When I came out, I was with the kids and I wasn't distracted, you know, mm -hmm. and, and that's just, I don't know. I think you just do what life hands to you and you can dig in. Oh, shoot. 
the delivery person is here with a package. Calm down. You're fine. Anyway, so that, I don't know. That's kind of just how we did it. I'm sure there are things we could have done better, but yeah, it worked. Of course. Yeah. And, you know, um, so like I said, I, I, I kind of feel that people that listen to that, you know, a, a goal that I love with these is that I, I'd love for people to listen and kind of be inspired to pursue the things that they love, whether it's a, a deep passion or just a goal they want to achieve. Um, so a question for you is, who or what inspires you? Oh, gosh, I think the process itself inspires me. Um, when I when I go to specific artists, um, I think I'm most inspired by multidisciplinary artists like Patti Smith. Um, do you know Patti Smith? Yeah. Okay, so she's, you know, she's a writer, she's a painter, and she's a musician an artist. And I find the way that she lives her life to be very inspiring because she lives a life and then she shares the stories or she shares the art, you know, um, her books, her recent books are just so, so, so good. M train, just kids. Um, what else are the year of the monkey? I need to get her new one. The, uh, wool gathering, I think is what it's called. Um, but so like, I find that very inspiring, especially because I, I do have children and I do have a whole, like, I have a whole life that I'm living. And, um, I think it's a mistake to like zero in so much on making that you forget to like go live something so that then you have something to talk about. Um, I also really, really love, uh, an American writer named Annie Dillard. Um, she's a literary writer. She writes essays and novels. Um, and she has an essay called The Writing Life. And she just talks about fearlessness in your art and um, how it's just resonated with me so much. Um, she has this one illustration in that essay where she talks about uh, you've built, say you're working on something, you're working on body of work for her, it's a novel. And you've written this whole thing and, and you've got a, pages and pages and pages and then you're rereading it and you realize that she uses the a building a house building analogy she says that you look and you look in horror and realize it's a load-bearing wall that needs to go so what do you do you knock it out and you duck you know you're vulnerable um i find her really inspiring uh writers like wendell berry I, a lot of non-musicians i guess um you know, and maybe that's just because I know more about their life. Uh, but Wendell Berry, he's a farmer, conservationist, essay writer. Hello. This is Shiloh. Oh, bless. She's getting ready. This is Shiloh. Say hi. Come here, war. Um, I really love, I have a line actually from Wendell Berry tattooed on my arm. Right there, and it says, a little song, a little song to keep us unafraid. And I just, I don't know, I love his poetry too. So those are probably my, we're gonna get off this call and I'm gonna be like, oh, I forgot someone really important. <laughs> but those are big ones, yeah. Yeah, no, of course, you know, I think it, 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 that, that's, that's why I think I kind of, it, it, as you said, it, it could be because you know a bit more about their lives and, the way they, right. they can put life together you know does, you right. don't have to be inspired by a musician being a musician you know you can draw inspiration from anywhere and that's something that I love so those words you said were, were really really great I love that you'd probably really enjoy her I'll uh email you the book that that came yeah from. for sure Mary Oliver oh, the other one Mary Oliver okay I'm done now <laughs> <laughs> so in regards to uh back to sort of the live shows that you've done, whether it was recent or in the past, um, mm -hmm. do you have any standout moments that really resonate with you? Um, playing at Americana Fest last September was an incredible moment. Come on, go with your dad. <laughs> uh, she's out. He got, he got her with a team. See, that's what I mean. That's the given thing. I texted, him, I texted him and I said, can you get the puppy? And he was in. Uh, 
This Americana Fest in September was really special to me because that event is really important in my genre and to be still kind of new in that community and um, given the chance to perform uh, was, I mean, it was incredible. That was, and it was like the whole week was incredible. I had like a, you know, when you go to summer camp as a kid and you come home and you have like the summer camp blues, that's kind of how I felt after because it was just so wonderful. Um, yeah. It was great. And then the album release show for sure last, last November because everybody was playing and they were all, my whole band, they're like the people you want around you if you want to get hyped. They are like yeah. a hype super group. They are just all so in and um, they're incredible artists and they love each other. And so just the friendship of that and, you know, there were a good bit I think we had like 150, 160 people that night, you know, and so in a smaller room, it felt, it felt full. And, and that was just really special because I was up there singing and I thought to myself, I'm doing, I'm doing what I love to do with people that I love. And this is so special. I can't believe I get to do this for work. Like, this is what I do full time. That's insane. You know? That's amazing. Um <laughs> You know, I'm I'm really looking forward to seeing whether it whether it's still in Americana, whether you decide to go another route. Uh, I'm really mm -hmm. really excited to see sort of where your career takes you because I think yeah. uh, I really think that people need to catch catch some of your music because I think it's it's so captivating. Every song is so captivating. I find, um, yeah. and it can it can help in any kind of mood. It doesn't have to be, you know it doesn't matter where you are in, in, in and what you're doing in that day I just find I can put your music on and it's really really comfortable to listen to good I'm so glad well I'm working on the next one I'm getting started already because I'm an <laughs> obsessive worker <laughs> I definitely have to keep an eye out for that yes please do I'm recording it all here in my studio here um so I'm really I'm I actually would have started on that, but Olivia, Liv came down um, and I started on her session first, but yes, it's happening and it's gonna be more, even more like raw and um, kind of, I'm, I'm kind of turning up the volume on all the elements that kind of make my songwriting unique. Um, and it's going to be, you know, no editing, um, little to no editing on any of it. I want it to feel live, as live as possible. I'm not even, uh, I don't know how much, do you record? Can I get nerdy or? You can go, you can go for it. So like even down to things like, um, like the bass guitar, I'm not gonna plug it direct to track it. I'm gonna amp it and, um, you know, full takes of whole songs. We're not like going section by section and I'm leaving in room noise and I'm leaving, I'm just leaving a lot, I'm leaving a lot in there because a lot of my favorite albums um, have that, you know? And I think that my music is all about bringing people in, bringing you in close. And I want to really replicate the way a show feels um, because I think that, um, I don't know. It's just special. And I, I'm never going to be an artist who's going to do the same thing twice. You know, just like you said, New York was unexpected on that record. I'm always going to do that. Every record is going to have something that people are going to be like, huh? And that's on purpose. Um, yeah. So I'm excited. It's I'm going to finish it this year and and probably put it out in the spring of next year. That's amazing. I'll definitely 100% have to keep an eye out for that. And and like you said, yes. you have to stick with what what makes you you. And that's what people are going to love about you is is sort of the unexpected moments and just the raw talent and the ability. I think is that's amazing. Thank you. Um, and speaking of Liv. Um, yeah. So, as, so like I said, we, we kind of spoke briefly off camera. Uh, Liv is yeah. a artist that you're uh, producing. Yes. Um, do yes. you want to talk to us about sort of your relationship with Liv and, and sort of how that all started? 
Absolutely. Uh, Liv is from New York. Uh, she's from the Hudson River Valley area up there. And I met her through some mutual songwriting friends, um, Leon Meitzen and then Brian Elijah Smith, who produced my last record. Uh, her family has this beautiful little farm up in, I guess it's almost Poughkeepsie area. And right when lockdown kind of was over in May of, I guess it was May of 2021, uh, they invited a handful of artists up to stay on the property and do like a mini uh, music festival, um, socially distanced, everything was outside. Um, you know, they capped it at like 50 people per night. And that was when I met Liv and her family and we just really hit it off. She's just, she's a great hang. She's a lot of fun. And uh, her vocals are just, she sounds like if you took like a young Fiona Apple and kind of mixed it with a Shania Twain, like that's the voice, you know? Um, but she's young, I think she's 22. And, um, I don't know. I'm obsessed with her voice and I think she's just a natural talent. And uh, we kind of started talking then while I was up for that weekend um, about working on some things together. And I wasn't sure, you know, how serious they were about it. She was finishing college. And then her mother reached out to me. Um, I, and I think it must have been September or October of last year. Her mother reached out to me and said, hey, we would love for you to produce some songs for Liv. You know, she finishes school in December. What do you think about January? And I was like, no way. I'm not doing January. I'm putting out an album like the day before Thanksgiving break. I don't want to do January. We went back and forth. Obviously, we did do January. It was just, it made the most sense. But it was definitely a little bit crazy. Uh, but of any artist that you would have come down to the town where you live and then recording in your home space she's just she's an incredible house guest and she's super talented and I taught her how to engineer a little bit so she actually saved me some time with pushing buttons and stuff I taught her how to open tracks and and uh mic things up and everything and then what one other thing I love about her is how adventurous she is with sounds so she'll come in and if I said you know what, we're going to throw um, an SM57 on, on your vocal and she wouldn't even bat an eye. And those aren't like, you don't usually use those for vocals in this modern time, but she has this smoky voice and I thought it might sound cool. And it sounds analog. Everything sounds really like super warm and unique. Um, you know, so she's just really, really open to things. I mean, we have one song that has kind of a George Harrison wacky chord progression. I wrote a lot of the music. She came with tons of lyrics and some really beautiful melodies. And since I write from melody a lot myself, it was kind of a natural fit. I would just listen to her melody, mess around with the chords. And then instead of building the songs from the drums, bass, guitars, and the vocals being last, with her record, I'm starting with her. She's the nucleus. Getting the real performances first and then we're building out like this. And oh my gosh, I've never done this this way and I love the way it sounds. It's, it's so rad. I haven't even touched the drums yet and the recordings sound very, um, very full. Wow. So it's exciting. I'm very yeah. excited to see sort of uh, how you both work together and, um, and so, is that kind of something that you could see yourself continuing, maybe helping produce uh, up and coming artists as well? I would love to do anything I can do to help young artists, um, you know, especially marginalized artists, you know, kind of get their feet under them and provide a very affirming uh, studio experience. Because as an artist, a lot of times, um, when you walk in to work with a producer, it can be very intimidating and you don't get to get your hands dirty, really. You know, you might tell them how you want something to sound and then they go and do it. And I don't want, I've had that happen to me so many times over the course of my life 
that I want to be the opposite of that. You know, obviously I'm going to offer, you know, guidance and, and my own creativity to bring to it, but I want, I think a more effective way to lead people is to pull things out of them, you know, to, to push them to um, be their best and also to like maybe get outside the comfort zone, but not in a way that's making you feel like I'm making all the shots, but in a way that's empowering so that the next record they make with whoever they make it with, they can come in with confidence and also kind of a clearer sense of identity of like, what's great about me as an artist? What, what am I good at and what can I lean into? Um, and so that's really what I want to do. I don't want to make it like a money maker at all. I think I will only work with people that you know, that it makes sense. Like with Liv, it really makes sense. And I would love to do that with more people um, down the line for sure. It's really fun. That's awesome. I can't wait to see, uh, you know, all the things that you kind of, you know, push to do uh, going on in the future, whether it's help produce up and coming artists or whether it is yourself with your own music. Um, just for all the viewers who are watching or listening, um, do you want to say any social medias where they can help find you? Yes. So it's super easy. I am van plating on everything. So, and find me on everything, Instagram, Facebook. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Spotify. I have music on Bandcamp. If you're like an ethical music buyer, Bandcamp is there. Uh, Apple music. I have a ton of music videos on YouTube. Um, so just van plating, find me, uh, and I have a whole merch store too on my website of really, really cool uh, shirts and totes and stuff that I actually wear all the time because I like it so much. So yes, please come find me. Please say hello. Please tell me you found me on this wonderful show. I'll make sure I'll leave all the links down in the description so they can find you just yes. by the links. Uh, van, thank yeah. you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. It's been a blast.